Hey guys, it's Katie and welcome back to my channel today. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I have a couple of fun little projects for you guys that I wanted to share with you today. I am playing along once again with Heidi Sambol over at Happily Thriving Heidi and she is putting out her monthly DIY challenge and today's theme is all about spring. I hope you enjoy the projects I have in store for you today and I hope that if you do, you will think about subscribing and joining me on a regular basis here on YouTube. Also, make sure that you hit the bell so that you can be notified when I upload future videos. Let's head to the craft table and get started on today's project. So I am using uh, Waverly chalk paint and I just have a 1x12 board that I cut square. I am thinking that I am going to do a much more in-depth video on how I make my signs, how I pick the wood, and that type of thing. But for today, I really wanted to show you guys how to do the um, uh, buffalo plaid technique in painting. I finally have, I feel like I have mastered it a little bit. But I'm going to be making two signs, and so I'm just doing two coats of paint, um, the Waverly white chalk paint on both of these. Um, that other board is a 1x6 that is cut down. I didn't have any um, rabbit designs that I really liked, and so I just went ahead and folded a piece of paper in half and then drew half of the rabbit image that I wanted to use. And then, of course, when you open it up after you cut it, it will be the whole rabbit. And so then that is going to be my template and I'm going to trace it onto the larger board. I am going to use um, my Cricut and some stencil vinyl and on the other board, but for this one, I'm just using the outline that I drew and it made it asymmetrical because I folded the paper in half and then I'm just kind of lightly going over it with my pencil. I'm going to be able to hide most of those pencil marks when I paint and then if not you can always erase or just paint over it, touch it up and paint over it. So that's probably what I'm going to be doing. So for the buffalo check pattern after I have this drawn on here I'm just going to go ahead and draw some lines um, kind of trying to keep the spacing even. I didn't measure anything like that, but if you wanted to, you definitely could. But if you guys have watched any of my videos, you know that I am just a good enough crafter. Um, I did kind of try to start towards the middle so that I knew where that line was going to be. And then for painting, I've got a fairly flat brush and I'm using a smaller one so that it will fit in there. And to keep myself from messing up, I'm just filling in the spots that I know I want to be black. And then I'm just taking my brush and pulling from the top part of that little square and pulling it down filling all of these in. I did have to go in with a smaller brush at the end and fill in some of those littler spots that I couldn't get because I didn't want to make too big of a mess. However, if you were just doing the buffalo check pattern on a regular um, board, you wouldn't have to do that. So now I just flipped it around and I'm pulling it from the other side and this is helping to create a almost perfect little square. And by using that flat brush and laying it down flat on the line and pulling it towards me, I was able to get a much crisper line. So like I said, I'm gonna fill all those in and fill in the rest of them with a smaller brush um, just to kind of fill in the holes. And then I'm going to move on to my gray. And depending on how you wanted to do it, you could, um, mix the black and white to make a gray or I just use a regular gray paint. I am just using um, acrylic paint on these. I, I did use chalk paint, like I said, for the base, but I'm just using acrylic paint here on this part of the project. 
and it is kind of fun because it is not going to be like a perfect outline of this rabbit so it's it's just gonna look kind of funky and fun i've seen a lot of these rabbits where they have used a buffalo check patterned um, fabric and i thought maybe it would be fun to paint it so for the gray um because i didn't want to mess up again i did like all of that top line i skipped a row and then i did the next row and filled it in and that is what's going to create your buffalo check obviously when you do the first color the black like that that's going to be more of a checkerboard pattern and then to fill it in with the buffalo check i just skipped a line and now i am just touching it up and kind of covering some of those pencil marks and touching up some of my oopsies and i'm really excited with how this turned out um like I said, I had originally saw this with fabric and I just thought maybe I could try painting it now that I've kind of figured out my buffalo check <laughs> technique. Um, these images were ones that I had um, on my Cricut and so that's what I'm using. So I'm using my stencil vinyl that I cut out using my electric cutting machine. and. Um, I've got transfer tape and like I said, I plan to do a much more in-depth uh, wood sign video. I got to thinking about this that I'm like, mm, I need to do that instead of just kind of these quick videos to show you what I'm making. So what I'm doing here is applying a white base to match the background. And what this does is it seals in the stencil vinyl. And I like to use stencil vinyl. A lot of people use um, contact paper. You can do a lot of things really cheap, but if I'm making videos or if I'm doing something that I'm going to sell or something, I like to use the stencil vinyl simply because it's easier to see when it comes to videos. So what I did with the white paint was just seal in the stencil vinyl. So now when I go in with my color, I don't have to worry about it bleeding underneath. And I try to really go very lightly again anyway, but then I don't have to worry about pressing down too hard and any of it squirting out underneath the, um, the uh, stencil vinyl. <laughs> there we go. So that is how I usually do my signs. I know some people use Mod Podge. Um, I'm not a fan of that. I usually like to just use the base color and do it. Now I'm going to peel all of that off of there and let it dry. And then I'm going to add the words over the top of that. And I won't be able to do that same technique with the words, so I'm just going to have to be a little bit more careful. And the same goes for if you chose to do your background as a stain, that's also harder to get that seal. So you just have to do a much lighter coat around um, your images on the vinyl if you are not going to put that little seal mod podge um maybe that would work if you were doing vi or stain there we go Whew, too many things that i'm trying to remember here but i absolutely love these little peep bunnies they are super super cute and i thought that these would be fun for um the upcoming Easter holiday and so I just made the words to go along with it that says hang in with my peeps and then I put it out in my front room and it's good to go. So like I said um, I am going to put this over it after I let it dry good and one thing about this is it did cut a border just because I blocked it out um, and it so it cut a border and you saw me in the first part use painters tape just to kind of put around there because I'm a messy crafter you guys know that <laughs> I am a messy crafter so the painters tape just kind of helps hold it and then I just went around and really pushed down around around all of the letters so I got some ink I loaded up my little sponge makeup sponge and then I 
unloaded it on the plate and off to the side so there's not a lot of paint on my sponge and then that is also going to help i'm not pressing down really hard either and i'm going to do one layer and let that dry and then i'll go back in and do a little bit more and make sure that you cover up all of your words don't you you would hate to peel that off and then go oh i forgot the dot or the t or part of this letter so um then i'm just adding another round of black paint so that it'll thicken it up a little bit and you will see when I pull this off of there that there is going to be a little bit of bleeding and I'm just going to have to go in and um, clean it up a little bit but those are some tips but like I said as I was doing this and as I got to thinking about it I thought I really need to do a more in-depth video of like how I get my wood where I get my wood what type of wood works best, what type of paint works best with certain woods and stains and just all of the tips and tricks that I have. So today's videos are very quick on how I make my signs, but I wanted to have a couple of new signs to put out. Um, I recently was at Hobby Lobby and as I wandered around and my daughter was like, "Ooh, I like that and "Ooh, I like that. And I'm like, hey, we can make that. And she gets so frustrated with me when I say that. But in reality, I don't want to pay like 15 or $20 for something that I know I can make at home. And granted, it might cost about the same amount, but I have the supplies and I love doing it. That's why I say that. That's why I say I'm going to do it at home. So I'm just touching things up and then I'm going to be ready to um, frame these. For my frames, I always use one by twos and 90% of the time I usually use stain for the, my, my frames, but today I decided I'm going to add a little bit of color to this and I'm just using acrylic paint. And so this is something to note that acrylic paint really does suck into, or the wood really sucks up the acrylic paint a lot more than chalk paint. And after I got going, I got to thinking about that. I should have used chalk paint. So I did use chalk paint in black and I will link up all the supplies that I use down below and I will link up all the tools as well. But um, the black or the chalk paint really dries a lot faster and it doesn't suck in so much into the wood so then you don't have to do as many layers. I didn't realize this was out of frame. I'm sorry about that, but I'm just using my Ryobi brad nailer and nailing those on. And that is simple, simple. And so now I have two super cute little signs to add to my holiday decor throughout my home. I hope you guys liked today's video. And if so, please give me a thumbs up and then make sure you come back for more videos in the future. Have a great day and thanks so much for watching everybody. For more behind the scenes on today's video, as well as bonus DIYs and just a little bit of fun, make sure you're following me over on Instagram. That's where the party's at. Thanks so much for watching.